So my meal plan this week includes Mexican meatloaf, chicken piccata, an Asian dinner from a box with a few upgrades to make it a little homemade. Um, if we have leftovers from the Mexican meatloaf, we're going to have leftover makeover flautas. We're also going to have French dip sandwiches. And we are going to have pizza from a box, but we're going to jazz that up with a few extras. On Sunday of next week, I don't need a meal. And I won't be doing any meal planning because we're having family dinner night. Um, our sides this week are going to be very simple. We're going to have mashed potatoes. And we probably will make those today. We're going to have pasta. We're going to have the street corn salad. We're going to have rice. Um, for our veg, we're going to have broccoli. We still have one zucchini leftovers from Smart and Final. Um, what else do we have? We have a little bit of lettuce. So we might have a, a, a salad with our meatloaf. Um, I have the veggie uh, bag of veggies for $1.99 that I got over at Smart and Final. So we'll have those. We have plenty of fruits. We have oranges. We have clementines. We have apples. And then I also have canned fruits and vegetables should the need arise. So we'll make sure we get all of our food groups in. It's hard to get all those fruits and veggies in since they raise the recommended amount. That's for sure. So let's get started on our straight corn salad. And this is super simple. Oh, I'm losing my receipts. There we go. Let's go ahead and get started on our straight corn salad. So we've got our cast iron skillet here on my stove top. And we're just going to go ahead and turn that to like a five. I think medium is fine. We're going to let that get heated up. And then while we do that, let's go ahead. This is our bag of corn. Usually I use canned corn <clears throat> that I drain and dry. Um, when I went to go get some, I'm completely out. I'm on the fence. Is corn a vegetable or a starch, or is it both for it? While we're waiting for that pan to heat up and we're just going ahead and chopping this onion, I'm going to chop both halves of it because I'm going to put some in my Mexican meatloaf. And then I am also going to put the rest of it into our um corn salsa and anything else that we might need that needs a little needs a little extra so we're just giving that a rough little chop again i don't care how you chop your onions this isn't top chef gordon ramsay's always welcome okay well maybe i could have done a better job doing this oh well and as always, my hands have been washed. My counter has been thoroughly cleaned and sanitized. I'm not worried about cooties at all. Well, I am. I'm actually pretty darn concerned about cooties. Okay, that's pretty hot. So I'm going to just throw this frozen corn right in there and let it get started. We've got our onion. Let's do some bell pepper next. And it's all these little tedious chores like chopping the onion, chopping the bell peppers, toasting the corn. If I if this was a weekday and I had had a hard day at work and I had this little frozen bit of corn in here, um, this is the kind of thing that if I was in a time crunch would absolutely drive me crazy and um, I might just ditch the whole thing and order a pizza or get some other fast condiment product out of the refrigerator. So I think it's good like meal, meal prep day is good because you know if you come across like an obstacle well, now that's all doing its thing. Perfect. Perfect. Good job. Be your best self. You can do it. Um, anyhow, yeah, just the tedious little tasks 
I think if you get nothing else done, like chop a couple of onions, chop up some peppers, um, you know, saw your meats for the week. Anything that gives you a leg up and sets you up for success, that's, that's my best encouragement for you. Um, if, if you're under a time crunch, and you know, not everybody has a whole Sunday afternoon to prep for the entire week. Uh, I'm just lucky I'm at a point in my life where I don't have a lot of daily demands. And I'm just giving these a rough chop. I don't care how you chop them. I don't care how I chop them most of the time either. Did you get some bell pepper in your bite? Fantastic. Good for you. And these are mostly still frozen because we got these. These are the ones we got at Food City. And after chopping up uh, all 12 of those um, peppers, I ended up with about two gallon size bags of peppers. And so I froze them because I want to use those um, for a while. But I certainly don't want them going back. And that corn now smells amazing. So, yay, hooray. Super duper. And just a little bit of char on this corn now. And most of the water has evaporated from, you know, being in the freezer. And I don't know where that corn came from, but I can guarantee you that it was on sale because I hardly ever buy frozen vegetables unless they're on sale. My sister said she was going to stop by today that she has some mushrooms. They went to uh, like a Carnesiera in Prescott Valley and as their free gift with purchase they got some clamshells of baby Bellas and they called me last night wanting to know what to do with them because they got so many and I said well they freeze beautifully you know and gave them instructions on how to freeze your mushrooms and um, she asked me if I wanted some so I said yes please and thank you and so they're supposed to stop by and drop some off for me today and that'll be nice bell pepper all chopped up there and we've got our onion if I was going to put these in the refrigerator for use later in the week I would put those in like uh, prep boxes with lids so they did not smell up my entire refrigerator but we're going to use those today and they will be fine and I don't know Can you see the corn's getting just a little bit brown? I wanted a little bit more brown than that. But not a whole lot. This just adds a little something, a little extra flavor. I think it's delicious. Okay, so our corn has toasted and it's got a little bit of brown on it. That's fantastic. And we're just going to go ahead and start assembling the rest of the salad. So I've got some bell pepper. Oh, just a little bit more. Why not? And then let's go ahead and add some onion. And you could certainly use red onion. White is what I have in the refrigerator. So white is what it's going to get. ahead and chop up a green onion and some cilantro so I just went out to the garden and grabbed some cilantro and I'm just going to give that a really just informal choppity chop I don't mind if I get whole pieces of cilantro I know this is a controversial herb if you don't like it use parsley use whatever you like if you don't have fresh, use dried. Don't let that stop you from doing this. There's going to be more than enough moisture in this salad to rehydrate any dried herbs that you may add. So 
yeah, don't let that stop you. And this is just a nice little top of a green onion. I hardly ever pull them. Use some now, save some for later. Add this to our big bowl here. And I like a big bowl, even if it seems too large, because it's better than having a bowl that's too small and then you have no room to add anything. I can find that to be very irritating sometimes. Wish I had a bigger bowl. Think we need a bigger boat. Okay. All right, well that looks delicious. Let's go ahead and, oh, I wanted to add, I wanted to add a couple of tablespoons of this and this is just a diced tomato with green chilies. And I just wanted to add a couple of tablespoons to this just to give it a little zing because we're not using a jalapeno or a serrano. I don't think I have any of those up in the garden yet. And I know that I used all of the ones that I had last week from that I got on discount from Fry's. So I'm just going to drain most of the juice off of this. And these are a great money saver because they are already seasoned. Um, if you're low on spices but feel like a little Mexican food, you can grab one of these and get started on your meal. Little tablespoons there. And then we're going to reserve the rest for our meatloaf. So you could put black beans in this. The possibilities are endless. But it looks good to me so far. Very colorful, very nice. Andrew likes colorful dishes. He thinks he's eating very nutritiously if it's colorful. So let's go ahead and make the dressing. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our dressing. And this is pretty simple. This is the size of my spoon, about a tablespoon. And I'm gonna add, oh, about two generous heaps of mayonnaise, about two generous tablespoons. And I'm also going to add two tablespoons of sour cream. A squeeze of fresh lemon. If you had juice that's in a bottle, that's fine too. No sweat. Oh, I got a seed. I can't believe it. I thought I cut this shallowly enough that I would not get a seed. But that's okay. We're going to fish it out here. No problem. So, a little squeeze of this. Maybe we'll just go ahead and give it a squeeze over here, too. And we're going to mix this together. And now let's go ahead and add some things to it. Let's add a little bit of our taco seasoning. Because we already know this has all the things in it. I don't know maybe that's a generous teaspoon we're gonna taste it if we need more we can add it you can always add but it's really hard to fix it if you add too much we want it to have a good spice kick we don't want it to be too spicy this is a little cayenne and this is for Andrew because he likes it a little bit spicier so we're just gonna add just a smidge I don't even know how much that was just a sprinkling and that's looking really creamy and delicious happy about that let's go ahead and see what else it needs got my handy dandy toothpicks ooh that's pretty good but I'm gonna say that could even go for just a little bit more cayenne That's pretty delicious. I can move with that. Okay. Okay. Now 
I'm just going to go ahead and pour this over and dress our salad. And I'm going to start off with about that much. And then just stir. I can always add more. There's nothing worse than an overdressed salad. I think that's just about all we're going to need as far as the dressing. But don't worry. I'll find something to do with it. these couple of teaspoons full. Okay, now let's make our Mexican style meatloaf. Super excited about this because we're going to be using some of that chorizo that we got last week at, <clears throat> pardon me, Food City. We've also got some 80-20 ground beef. We're going to use the peppers and onions. And then let's see what else we can do with it. Yay, meatloaf. Okay. So meatloaf, we've got one and three-fourths pound of ground beef. And like I said, this is an 80-20 blend. And we've got my KitchenAid all set up here because it is going to do all of the heavy lifting for me. So let's go ahead and get our ground beef in here. You could certainly stir this with your hands. You could use a hand mixer. You could just use a spoon, whatever rocks your boat. For me today, it's just a little bit easier to use this kitchen aid. So I'm going to throw the chorizo. That was chorizo. That was um, one quarter of a pound of chorizo. And chorizo is a, uh, a spice beef that's beef and pork chorizo and it is already spiced it doesn't need anything from me it is super delicious and good and i need a cutting board this is three pieces of bread um this is what remains of the sourdough loaf that we've got a couple of weeks ago off of the discount rack at smart and final and i want to move it along because like I said, I, I did get it a couple weeks ago. It's been stored in my refrigerator. I already checked it for mold and we are doing good. And this was a rosemary sourdough. So that will just add a little something extra. And I've got three pieces here and I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a helping hand and get it in smaller pieces. I'm just gonna load those in. I'm also going to put in the other half of our can of the diced tomatoes with green chilies. And we may or may not be able to get this into a loaf pan. It looks like it's going to make a lot. So. Okay, so we've got our diced green tomato or our diced tomatoes with green chilies in there. And we're also going to need a little bit of milk. And I'm going to use this can. I'm going to say about half a can of milk. And I think that adding a little bit of milk not only helps it act as a binder, but also makes your meatloaf have really great texture. So that's something that I always just make sure we have. I'm going to add three eggs to this. And it seems like a lot of meatloaf for two people. It is, but I am hoping for leftovers so I can make those um, flautas next week. We love meatloaf. I love meatloaf. For years, Andrew would not eat meatloaf. He is so picky. I don't like meatloaf. My mom would make it. I didn't like it then, and I'm sure I'm not going to like it now, and he would never try it. And then, you know, when we were at home in 2020, I'm going to add, of course, our favorite taco seasoning, and I'm going to add about two tablespoons. Maybe just a little bit more. Okay, when we were at home in 2020, and you know, we're getting down to like brass tacks, like you can't afford to be so picky anymore, mister. You know, we were both unemployed, yada, yada, yada. I made a meatloaf and he tried it and he said, I don't know why, but that meatloaf is absolutely delicious. And I've been missing it all this time. I'm like, hello? He also learned to eat tuna. So, you know, fantastic. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a quick one, 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 one. Okay. 
now that everything's incorporated, I'm just really going to let it do its thing and get everything good and mushy in there and combine. It doesn't need, oh my gosh. Oh, the smell. The smell is amazing. It doesn't need any help from me. The KitchenAid will take care of it. It knows just what to do. I'm going to put a couple things away, get some dishes done, and I'm going to let this go for like three minutes. And it's on, it's on a two. It doesn't look like it needs a three either. It's going to be well incorporated. Oh my goodness. You know what I forgot? I forgot the peppers and the onions. Hello. That's what happens when I set something out of eyesight. I forget it. This would have been delicious even without peppers and onions, but really, what's a meatloaf without some peppers and some onions? And I'm gonna put all those in. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's see how that smells. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's better. Yay! Okay, so after about three minutes, that is all incorporated. And judging by the size of it, I'm pretty positive there was no way that that was going to fit into my loaf pan. So we're abandoning the loaf pan in favor of the cast iron skillet. And I'm using the same cast iron skillet that I used when we were making the toasted corn for the street corn salad. So I just gave it a little wipe out because it did not have a potentially hazardous food in it. I don't think it needs a thorough wash. And that's what my meatloaf looks like, my meatloaf mixture. All of the bread is incorporated. I know that seemed like a lot of bread, but it is all incorporated to the beef, chorizo, onion, pepper, green chili, tomatoes, and it is just going to fit in here perfect into this cast iron pan. This is very much how my mother would make a meatloaf because I was one of nine children. A meatloaf pan or a loaf pan was something comical. There wasn't one big enough to feed all of us. So very much in the meatloaf in the cast iron pan. The great thing about making a meatloaf in the cast iron pan is that it is going to have a really good delicious crusty bottom to it and I love that so yay hooray we're gonna give this just a little bit of a smooth out and you can see well maybe you can see that there are really good chunks of the peppers and onions in there they're very much identifiable very substantial what I'm gonna do is just take this little wooden spatula guy and I'm just gonna cr crisscross it over this meatloaf make a little a little valley in here and then when I get ready to cook this off I'm just gonna fill that with a little bit of jarred salsa that I bought at the dollar store and that's going to be my tomato like topping on on the top and then I'm going to bake this this is a big boy so this is going to bake in the oven I'm going to say an hour at least maybe an hour and 15 minutes at 350 degrees and I may start it off with a little bit of aluminum foil on top and then take it off midway through to allow a good crust to form and for my salsa to somewhat caramelize on the top. This looks and smells delicious. Medium jarred salsa. And let's go ahead and just give this a little river here. And then we'll have that tonight with the street corn salsa or the street corn salad. The other thing I really like about using this cast iron pan is that it has two little pour offs on the end. So if my meatloaf is a little bit extra greasy, it won't be any hassle at all to pour that off 
and serve a more clean portion. So, yay, meatloaf. Okay, so let's go ahead and pound some chicken for our chicken piccata. Chicken piccata is a great meal to make during the week because you pound the chicken very thinly, you make a super quick sauce with lemon and butter and some herbs, and then I'm gonna serve it with pasta. So all in all, it should be 15, 20 minutes at the most to put it together. And by pounding my chicken today, I am going to save myself some time and some hassle during the week. And it's super easy to do. And I have a, I have three pieces of the leg meat that we got from Food City. And I've got it in this storage bag, one piece at a time. It's how I like to do it. I'm gonna lay this out flat on my countertop. And I have a plate for my finished pounded chicken leg meat. And then I have this rubber mallet. I have a meat mallet somewhere, but um, I think this is more efficient. And so I've got this laid out. I'm going to start right in the middle and I'm going to try to get it as thin as I can without the entire uh, portion splitting apart. And I'm just going to from the middle out, and this is not a race. And these three portions, one will be for me, one will be for Andrew, and then we will have a leftover for Andrew's lunch. We can get a, an even better look at it there. And then I'm just going to pound it in the opposite direction. And just test it out to see if any pieces feel fatter than the other pieces. And that seems really good to me. This is going to cook up in just a few seconds because it is so thin. Just do our third piece. Almost done here. Now this is not a plastic bag that I will wash and reuse because it has had potentially hazardous product in it. And that's fine. I don't mind a bit. I'm going to throw it away. Better safe than sorry. It's so funny though because Andrew just came in here and asked me, am I in trouble? I said, why do you think you would be in trouble? What have you done? And he said, usually when I hear pounding coming from the kitchen, you're mad and I'm in trouble for something. I'm like, baby, you haven't done anything today. So he's not in trouble and I thought that was funny. That's adorable. And I'm just pounding again from the middle of the portion to the outside. Trying to get it as even as possible because I want this to cook really fast. I don't want it to take much time. I want it to cook thoroughly. I don't want to be waiting on this side to get done because this side is uh, thinner. That looks good and flat to me. So, here we go. All done. None of them broken half or split or anything like that. And they're all really nice and about the same size and pounded out. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of sanitizer and get this mess cleaned up. I right, have a little salad spinner here. And I've got my Herbis Blend vegetables that I got for $1.99. Because I got them on sale, I'm going to take a really good look at them and make sure that everything looks as fresh and delicious as possible. Is there any mold? Are there any bugs? Anything that would not be appealing to us and impede our enjoyment of this delicious veg? Is it too wet? Is it slimy? Is it just nothing? I just don't like that one. These all look good. The 
carrots look a little dry, but that's okay because we're going to use plenty of butter. Okay, everything in here looks terrific. That one and that one. Okay, everything else looks really good and terrific. Yay, hooray. Maybe that one. I'm going to go ahead and get these all washed up. And it's super simple. I just add some water, let it soak, and then give it a good spin up. Make sure that they're nice and dry. Going to put this in a little casserole dish. Going to salt and pepper them. Put some butter on them. And you know for me, six minutes in the microwave. And my veg is done. So, one more thing down. We're almost there. Our water is boiling. So, let's go ahead and get it together. And we need three-fourths of a cup of water for our potatoes. Get those little syrup. Good deal. We need half a cup for our au jus. And the rest of it, we're going to make our rice. with our easy a convenience meal and sure I could make it the day of but there's I really like rice you know what I'm gonna add just a little bit more I really like rice for breakfast and so I'm gonna add oh about a fourth of a cup more here we go it'll be fun I like rice for breakfast. It was something that we ate often when we were kids. Um, rice with a little milk and butter and sugar. And I still eat it that way today. Let's take a look at my potatoes. And see, are they on the drier side? They look really, really good. So I'm not going to add anything else to those. Those are done. And then I will just, just like that, store them just like that, put them in the microwave, nuke those up super quick. We've got our au jus. And we're going to give that a little stirry stirry. And when on the day of the french dips we'll just go ahead and heat that up too i'm just gonna put it in this little jar and i know i can heat this up in the microwave minus the lid of course don't don't melt metal or don't microwave metal that's a bad deal i'm gonna set it back here just to cool off i'm gonna keep the lid right next to it so i don't lose it now i have this baking dish or this this measuring cup, not a baking dish. I have this measuring cup and I'm going to make a little sauce for our Asian meal because we're going to have the box Asian meal will have the rice. I have some wontons and I have some egg rolls and it's going to need a little dipping sauce. So this is something that I whip, whip up, it's super easy. I've got a bullseye barbecue sauce and I have a Kikkoman's teriyaki and I will just give this a good shake up because all of the best bits sink to the bottom and I want a really concentrated dipping sauce. So we're going to kill this barbecue, not to worry. Because I bought it at the dollar store 
and I didn't buy one, but I bought four. Because I use barbecue sauce a lot. Okay, that's okay. We're not gonna we're gonna add just a splash of water. Just a splash of water, because we're down to the dregs, but every bit counts, so there you go. Mm. Go ahead and take this off because this is an instant rice product. We'll just let that sit there and do its thing. And this does not require, you know, how much dipping sauce. It's a personal thing. Some, yes, some is good, but we're going to have like one egg roll each. And maybe four, maybe five wontons. So we don't need a tremendous amount of sauce. So what I have here, about one fourth cup of barbecue sauce. <clears throat> and then to that, I'm going to add, oh, about one fourth cup of the teriyaki. I'm going to give this a little stir up. And then let's taste it. Let's see if it needs anything. I'm thinking it's going to need garlic and the honey. But it's okay. It's okay to taste your food as you're making it. What else does it need? What do you think would be good? Use your best instincts. You've got them. I promise. They've kept you alive thus far. It definitely needs a little bit of honey. And if I have any left over, then we might have wontons the next day for lunch. Oh, well, that's obnoxious. Sorry. Honey bear, come on, man. Don't be making rude noises on my YouTube video. And just a sprinkling of the granulated garlic. Delicious. Okay, so now we have our dipping sauce. Uh-oh, somebody's at the door. Okay, so I've just poured off our sauce into this little mason jar. We'll go ahead and save this for our Asian dinner night. That was my baby sister and her boyfriend, and they came to bring me the Baby Bella mushrooms that they got for free with their gift with purchase at the Carnesiera yesterday. And then he also brought me from his garden. What? What did we get here? We got some butter leaf lettuce and some romaine and some red jade and some spinach and all kinds of good things. Yay, hooray. Well, it's my day, isn't it? Go ahead and get these put away so I can enjoy them the whole week long. Okay, so we have our Mexican meatloaf that's sizzling away in there. We also prepared our instant mashed potatoes. We have our corn salad, our street corn salad. This is the Asian dish that I'm going to be using. And like I said, this is a convenience product. We've got our dipping sauce. We've got some rice. We've got some wontons. I know that there are egg rolls in another part of the freezer that I didn't feel like digging in. These take and bake focaccia rolls, we're going to use these for our French dips. They will be delicious. And you know I got them on sale. Dollar, dollar ninety-nine. That's our au jus. We have some mixed veg with some butter and salt and pepper. These peppers and onions are to jazz up our convenience foods. The 
Asian meal and then also the pizza and the French dips. We pounded out our chicken for your piccata. We've got some spaghetti to serve with that. My steak is already sliced thinly in the freezer and I have to dig that out. But pretty much that is our pretty simple prep for the week. And we will be eating like fat cats. Yay, hooray. Everybody eats, nobody dies. So there we go. Pretty successful. For breakfast this week, we are going to have cereal and we are going to have yogurt. I offered to make parfaits. Andrew just wanted plain yogurt. That's fine with me. And then for lunch, we're going to have leftovers. And we're also going to have a makeover leftover meal with that meatloaf of the flautas via video coming up for you with that. So, yep. It's going to take care of us for the whole week. So we're going to have leftovers. And I'm not making anything special for lunch. So, okay. Well, I've got a few dishes to take care of. Not too bad. I've tried to stay on top of them. I've already took the trash out. Going to put everything away. Going to label and date everything. And I think we're all done with our Sunday planning and prep for the meals ahead. I feel like I'm set up for success. I hope you are too. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And it's just been a fun Sunday afternoon with you. Thanks so much for keeping me company while I do my meal prep. So be good. Be careful. Look both ways. And I'll see you next time.